Hey guys, Will Terry here, and today's video is going to be called Pro Tip Tone Paper Drawing with White Pencil. And this is the last video that I'm going to make in 2015. That's not really that big of a deal though, right? Okay, so we're going to move on with this. Um, so what you're seeing is a drawing that I did digitally. Um, and I'm, what I want to talk about is and give you a, a, a tip on is how to make your your um, tone paper drawings if you're doing them traditionally or if you're doing them digitally how to make them more appealing more effective how to get more out of the tone paper um, and so this one I did digitally uh, I got the texture or the paper because if you look at this um, let me just zoom in a little bit on here you can actually see like a paper texture there, right? Little imperfections and stuff in, in, a, in an actual piece of paper. So that was scanned in and I got that from a site called um, Lost and Taken. I love this site. You just go to their gallery and all these textures are free. And there, some of them are sort of high res. Um, uh, some of them are higher res than others, but um, you can usually find something that you like. And so, um, I really love that site. Um, so this is what I'm going to be talking about. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I've downloaded another piece of paper from him. I really like this one because it has uh, uh, even more imperfections and stuff. So it really looks real. And this one was a higher resolution. I think this one's like 2,000 pixels by 1,100. So it's not huge but it's big enough that I can do a nice little drawing on it's even got little wrinkles and folds in the paper so I started with um, with with this little drawing that I duplicated and again I did this in Photoshop so this is not pencil it's actually digital and I know I'm gonna get asked questions in the comments so I'm just gonna show you this it is a sort of a shameless plug but this is our this is my site that I co-own svslearn.com and this is my tutorial on how to how to make and use digital pencils in Photoshop. Um, and so that will hopefully answer any questions that are, that's in the comments. Um, so I'm gonna show you kind of what, what I think you should do and what a lot of people do and kind of talk about that. Now I would have, ideally I would show you some drawings from people that didn't turn out very well as examples of how not to do it, but then again, I'm sure there's not that many people out there that really want me using their work as, in a, as a bad example. So I'm not going to do that. But what I find most people do when they first start this technique is they, they overcook the white. So they just basically use the white pencil. And this is assuming you're using, you know, like a, a digital, um, I'm sorry, using a Prismacolor pencil for the white and maybe a prismacolor pencil in um, for the black for the dark and then kind of you know sh using um, cross hatching like I am or um, some other technique um, you know modulating the pencil to get the different value variations within um, but this is what I see a lot of times is that people will um, use the white way too much and in my estimation my the way I I see this 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 drawing technique being used the best it it's when um, you really allow the paper to do a lot of the work for you and that's the whole purpose of it um, really working on a toned ground I mean that's like an old master's technique that's that's going back to when um, oil painters um, back in the in 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 early times of, of oil painting I mean way way back um, would use what they call a grisaille, which is a French term, um, and it basically means toned drawing, toned paper, toned uh, ground to work from, so that you're you're not you don't always have the white of the paper showing through everywhere. It kind of knocks everything down to a medium tone, and then you can push your darks and you can you can bring up your lights from there. Um, so to do it like I am right here, kind of defeats the purpose of having the the toned paper at all. And that's what I see most people doing. They just use the white so much. And when, when really all you need to do is something like this, just a little, little subtle little statement that just basically says, um, 
that there's a there's a light hitting it and that that's really it you know and and maybe you would see a little bit of light you know coming in here if you need this to be lighter where the where the uh, where the light is hitting there's something like like in there something like that but you really want this area of, of um, half tone to just be paper okay so I've got and, and one of the reasons for that let's just skip because I got a drawing that I'm gonna work on here in a little bit um, but let's skip up here and just look at this uh, um, strawberry and one thing that you'll notice when you pull colors out of here is um, you know these are highlights in here right but if I if I pull that color out and paint with it oops am I on the wrong layer I am on the wrong layer I'm always on the wrong layer um, we'll just paint with it so that's where I, that's where I got right here that that tone um, we've even got we've got these highlights in here that's even darker in the strawberry we've got these light these highlights in there the none of them are white right all of these highlights even this right here let's zoom in and make sure that we're, we're actually selecting the highlight right that right there has tone in it and so is that a highlight right there yes but there's still tone in there so the thing that most people do is they don't realize that you don't always have to have a pure white highlight um, and so you can you can get a lot done with your drawing now what about over here I know some people are saying well, what about that rim light over there that's pretty close to white but even there and I don't know if you can see that on your screen there is a little bit of a tone in it it is um, not quite in the corner on the, the white there so let's go back and um, let's look at a drawing that I did um, and I've just put this on that that piece of tone paper that I have right there um, and again in, in the in the pencil tutorial I show how to um, take your drawing and separate it from the background so that it's clear so that you so it, it can just float on top of anything um, but here's a drawing that I have and, and my pro tip for you really is finish your drawing with the dark with the pencil that you're using or with the um, the Prismacolor or whatever it is that you're using to draw the darks in finish your drawing completely um, and leave all the places for highlights and stuff like you normally would if you weren't going to pretend in fact maybe the pro tip is pretend you're not, never going to use the white pencil like it's, it's just not even a part of the equation in fact this drawing that I did that you're seeing right now um, I did it on the iPad about a year ago and I never put any highlights in it so I thought it'd be a perfect one to actually bring in and use for this pretend like you're never going to use that white pencil because I, I see students all the time and they're on that white pencil so quick that they cover up all the beautiful areas where that paper is supposed to shine through so if I were working on this one what I would do is very limited and I would look for after I again after I completely finished um, my my painting or my drawing I would look to say now where what places have to get a little bit of a highlight well obviously um, this eyeball if, and let's pretend that our light is kind of coming from this direction right here um, so let's just say let's say that I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight in here right and then maybe the top of his lid there maybe there's gonna be something there and then maybe through here and as I do these these just these little bit of highlights they'll really bring out the drawing they'll really um, give you that sense of three dimensionality is that a word form mass um, maybe we would get a little something down here maybe on the tips and you could even I mean like you can go in on these scales let's just zoom in a little bit there and just kind of maybe in the highlight area again you don't wanna you don't wanna overdo it 
Maybe we'd get some down here again. And then maybe on our mushroom hat guy here. You, know, you have to think of the surface itself. Is it a shiny surface? Is it a matte finish? If it is, I don't want to overdo it too much either, you know? So maybe just something like that if it's more matte. Maybe we'd work some over. He's totally in shadow, so we don't want to do anything there. You know, maybe this back. But then, you know, if you put too many in there, you're going to create focal points where you don't want. Maybe this tongue is actually shiny, so we might actually get some really strong ones on there. And that's probably all I would do on here. So the, the white that you add really should be very, very limited and should only come at the very end. Um, and if you, you it, it's, it's almost like I think, again, I think I would just say, pretend like you're not going to use it at all. Maybe even wait a day, maybe even don't put any white on it until you, you look at your drawing the next day and see if your drawing is actually finished with the dark um, before you go ahead and put those lights in there and, and just try to leave as much paper as you can in that halftone area. And there is my pro tip. Thanks for watching. And I can't wait to start on the videos for next year. I have a bunch lined up, bunch planned, bunch, bunch of really exciting things. Have a great new year.